No, I'm not crazy. Yes, I know it's September, but we are starting to think about Christmas. <coughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because I absolutely love planning for Christmas. It's my favorite thing to do. It's my favorite thing to plan for. And it's September. So for me, that means I can start planning. And actually, if I'm being completely honest, I've already purchased a few presents. And something else, but I'll get to that in just a second. But you know what? It really is never too early to start planning Christmas. You can buy wrapping paper on Boxing Day or in the January sales. That's as early as it gets, so September really isn't that early. I have seven things for you that you can do now to get ready for Christmas. You know what it's like if you leave everything until December, there are not enough hours in the day to get it all done. So if we just sort of start off slow and do a few things that we can do now, it'll make it so much easier to actually enjoy the season once December arrives. Last year, I did do a similar video, but because it was 2020, there were a lot of things that had to do with the time it takes for the mail. So it was very focused on preparing early because the mail was taking a long time. Though I think there's one or two things that are the same, but it is worth a watch. Okay, so what are those things that you can do this month to start getting ready for Christmas? Number one is my favorite, and that is having a Christmas planner. Now I've printed my Christmas planner. I haven't set it up yet. I'm waiting for next month to do that, and I will do a video, don't worry. But I did print it off, so I have a place to put all the ideas for gifts or if I think of something that I want to do, like these things that I'm going to tell you today, it's a home for all those random thoughts that are swirling around in your brain to put them there so that they're not stressing you out. So you can get to them when the time comes, when it's time to do them. It's a place to house your Christmas plants. What I also like to do is to look at my Christmas planner from the year before and take inspiration. What did I do for stockings? What about a meal plan? Those things are easy to replicate year after year, especially when it comes to tradition. Christmas is wrapped up in tradition, so feel free to repeat things that you've done other years. It'll make life a lot easier. Now, I have my Christmas printable planner for sale for you, and there's a link in the description below. If you bought last year's, do not buy this year's. Buy the 2021 upgrade, and that will only be a fresh cover with the new date and a fresh November and December calendars. The rest of the pages are the same, so you can just print them off from your file from last year. Number two, if you see a gift that you think someone would like, just buy it now. Don't put it on your list and save it for December buy it now, that will not only spread out the cost of Christmas, because Christmas can get so expensive, that'll spread the cost out from September to December, but it'll also be something you can check off your list and you don't have to do it later. Or if you want to do it a little bit more strategically, you can do it maybe by family or by theme or by person. My mother used to have a huge list of people that she used to buy for and she would go by family. I do the same thing. She would start wide with distant, more distant relatives and then move in and we would be the last ones that she would buy for. I like to do things by theme. I don't want to say this out loud in case there's little ears listening, but you know the S word that we stuff? Um, I will buy those things by theme. So everyone gets a magazine, so I'll just go to the store one day and say, oh, I'll get our Christmas magazines now, and I'll just buy, um, and I'll buy one for everyone. Everyone gets a charger, so I'll buy all those at the same time. So if you have something like that, or maybe you have 16 teenage nieces, you can buy all their things together that kind of thing, or at least have those themes in mind as you're going shopping. If you're out running errands and you go by a shop where you know that someone would want something from, you can go in instead of waiting until December. Number three is to find a place to store those gifts until until December. My children watch my videos, so I probably won't tell you where I keep my <laughs> presents, but I do have a spot where I keep everything from September to December. Number four is to start thinking about your non-negotiables versus what are those things you can say no to this year. So what are the things you absolutely have to do this year? You do them every year. Everyone loves it. Everybody wants to do it. And then also, what are the things that, oh, we just do that because we have to, or we just do that because we do it every year. What can you get rid of to sort of ease your load, but also like if no one likes it, why are you doing it just because it's a tradition? So those are some of the things that you need to be thinking about now rather than in December where the decision is a little bit harder to make. Number five is to meal plan. You can go back to your last year's planner or think about what you did last year. Or maybe you want to spruce things up and do something different. If you have an idea of what you want to make come December, you can start buying things now when you go to the grocery store. Things that will keep, of course, you're not gonna to wanna to buy your fresh vegetables now, but 
things that keep like molasses for your gingerbread cookies or spices or you can even get a frozen turkey now. Like with the gifts that will help spread out the cost throughout the autumn so you're not spending a whole lot come December but also it'll just make it easier for you. You're not gonna go to the grocery store one time and get all your Christmas stuff. Taking reinforcements to help you push like three carts and then all the stuff doesn't in doesn't even fit into your cart. Having a meal plan and knowing what to look for, it'll make it easier on future you come December. Also, this is a great way to keep an eye out for sales. So something that's really expensive that you need It'll, if it comes on sale, then you can grab it then. If you are enjoying these Christmas tips so far, please give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Next week, I have a video about distractions and how to avoid them. So you don't want to miss that one. So have your notifications turned on. Okay, let's get back into the next tip. Number six is to think about the gifts that you want to make. Whether it's simply cookies for your neighbors or an elaborate quilt that you want to make for your sister, you need to assess how much time it's going to take you noting that you'll be busier in the autumn as you go up to Christmas. Not only time, but energy. Are you going to want to bake after supper, after a really long, busy day? Or maybe you could do it on a Saturday afternoon and freeze them. When can you sew that quilt? So now's the time to start thinking about, will this be doable? You don't even have to make the decision. Just have it marinating in your mind and keep an eye on your time and your energy as we go into autumn. And then you can plan in that Saturday afternoon or regular baking or quilting times. Even think about gift tags if you wanna make gift tags, teacher's gifts, anything that you want to make. Even if it's a basket of goodies for a teacher, you still have to put that basket together, wrap it up nice. Anything that needs your time and energy, now is the time to assess it or maybe you're just gonna give a gift card. Number seven, now is also the time to start thinking about those Christmas cards. Are you going to send them? Are you going to make them? You can start addressing envelopes now or at least gathering addresses so that you have them when the time comes. If you write a Christmas letter, you can start thinking about things that you're going to put on and have an outline going. Take your family photos or at least book a photographer or whatever you're going to do. Now is the time to think about those things because it's gonna come around fast. I have a bonus thing that you can do, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. First, I'd like to talk to you about my advent calendar. So I am so excited for this advent calendar because December can be so stressful, or at least busy for women and especially mothers. We need to make sure that we enjoy the season. A lot of the times we're just going, going, going until we're run ragged. We end up on Christmas day asleep in the chair with our presents around us because it's like the end of a marathon and we're just done and tired and it, it's, it can be really tough. So that's why not only do you have to start planning early, but also take care of yourself throughout the month of December. So my advent calendar has a little treat for you every day leading up until Christmas day. There are self-care items and there's also a lot of stationery, but there's also a few surprises thrown in there as well. So the advent calendar is open now for pre-order and that's so I can know how many things to order and make so that you don't miss out. I don't wanna order a certain number of calendars and then have them all sell out and then people miss out. So that's why they're on pre-order. There's a link for that in the description below. Right now they are on pre-order until the 15th. So that means that not only are you guaranteed to get a box, but you also get $5 off of that box. They are $45 US. Note that the prices are in Canadian dollars. I can't change it back, that's just the way the cart is. It's 57 Canadian or $45. US and that will guarantee that you get a box. On Wednesday the 15th, the price goes up and I can't guarantee that you get a box. I will order more than the number I get, but if you don't pre-order, I can't guarantee that you get a box. So hurry over, grab your advent calendar, and they will be shipping in November. Okay, that bonus tip. I want you to look back at Christmas last year and really assess how it went. What worked? What was fantastic? And those are the things that you may not even notice. So you have to think really hard more about the things that worked than the things that didn't because the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So the squeaky wheels, the things that didn't work, I want you to assess those and see how you can do them a little bit differently. But the things that worked, I want you to keep those the same. Not only did it go well, but your life will be easier if you just do it the same way as last year. Were you stressed out? Were you run ragged? Do you need more self-care? Do you need an advent calendar? So really look at last year, even past Christmases, see what worked, write that down we're doing that again and then the things that didn't work write down how can we tweak those how can we make these better and in that christmas planner there are two pages one is my dream christmas what 
what would I love my Christmas to look like? And then we sort of narrow it down the second page to what can I do this year? What is actually doable this year? And again, the link is in the description below for those. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below which tip that you are going to do first. Give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Next week, I'll be back with some tips on how to avoid distractions and actually get things done. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. Uh, go oh. Christmas is so... Sure. So I, I need my book. It's raining. My clothes are mine. Okay. You can subscribe here by clicking on my little face. Here are two more videos that I think you will like. If you made it this far, leave me Santa or Christmas tree or something else Christmas in the comments below. Have a fantastic day and happy planning.